Like a worker waiting for the next paycheck, Texans have pretty much always lived drop to drop. Water, that is. This finite natural resource is inextricably bound to the history of Texas. The state is crisscrossed by magnificent rivers racing on their course to the Gulf of Mexico. Impressive cities have grown up on their banks, now bulging at the seams with the thousands of families who relocate here every year. At the midpoint of the 20th century, the population of Texas was split 60% urban and 40% rural. Today, people who call our emergent, thirsty cities home outnumber those who reside in rural areas about nine to one. The bottom line here is that adequate access to water from the ground or surface sources will determine the fate of the state's rural and urban areas. If you don't take the necessary measures to build the infrastructure in order to be able to have that ready supply of water available, then you cannot have growth and development. You simply cannot. It doesn't do well. I mean, you have people that are moving into the area. You have businesses that are in the area that are seeking to expand, other businesses that we are trying to get here. And this is, this is our economic engine. The water literally is the fuel that drives the engine. About 40% of Texans live in a corridor that parallels Interstate 35, where it rains about 30 inches a year. Most of the state's unused water is located in sparsely populated East Texas, where it rains up to 60 inches a year. One conclusion that can be drawn from this geopolitical fact is that if Texas is going to continue to grow at its current pace, either the people will have to move east or the water will have to move west. Residents in West Harris County have traditionally relied on groundwater pumped from individual wells by municipal utility districts or other water suppliers. Not many people realized that there was a growing problem with land subsidence in their area or that aquifers supplying the region were beginning to decline. Few noticed when, in the early 1970s, just 50 miles south, an entire subdivision was overwhelmed by flooding and sank into the marsh. As county judge, of course, I represented citizens all over Harris County, and the big issue was out there in Brownwood and, and Baytown. And so when I went out there and saw what was happening, yeah. and those were my constituents, yeah. I took an a big interest in subsidence. Subsidence is a, the phenomenon where largely because you draw in water from water wells and you leave voids in the surface and the ground depletes, you know, comes down. Well, what it really affects more than anything else that does, you know, people could relate to after they begin to, to hear more about it, was it increased the likelihood of flooding. The Harris-Galveston Subsidence District, created by the Texas Legislature in 1975, was authorized to end subsidence and was armed with the power to restrict groundwater withdrawals. The district issued its first groundwater regulatory plan in 1976, prompting industries on the Houston Ship Channel to convert to surface water supplied from the recently completed Lake Livingston Reservoir. As a result, subsidence in the Baytown Pasadena area was dramatically improved and has since been largely halted. The combination of subsidence in northwest Harris County and evidence that aquifers were beginning serious decline confirmed the need to convert to surface water for this area as well. Based on the success of their initial effort in regulating groundwater pumpage along the ship channel, the subsidence district took a similar approach in north and west Harris County. The subsidence district has mandated that we convert all the area of West Harris County to surface water uh, by a given timetable. That basic timetable is by 2010 we're supposed to be 30% converted, by 2025 60% converted, and by 2035 80% converted to surface water. That means we are replacing well water. Why are we replacing well water? Because we have subsidence. We have taken so much water out of the ground that the ground is sinking, and when we have heavy rains, it floods. The state's population is projected to increase more than 70 percent between 2020 and 2070, from 29.5 million to 51 million. People are moving to Texas every day, anywhere from 1,000 to 1,200 people, and nobody's bringing any water with them. So how do we meet this challenge? It's important that we know and understand the population growth, 
where it's going to occur, what the needs are gonna be for those particular people, whether it's just residential, whether it's business, whether it's agriculture, whether it's manufacturing. Among all the 50 states, Texas indisputably ranks first in water public policy planning. The Texas Water Development Board was established after the drought of the 50s, when people across Texas came together and said, We'll never ever let this happen again. We'll never let Texas run out of water. The state water plan, produced every five years, provides a critical roadmap for our long-term planning and outlines strategies for dealing with shortfalls. Over the years, Region H had been actively engaged in the regional water planning process and had identified a number of projects that became recommended strategies in the state water plan. At the top of the list was Loose Bayou. The idea for the Loose Bayou project dates back to the late 1930s, when Houston leaders realized the need to identify water sources for future Houstonians. The region's water supply history, um, initially uh, groundwater was used in the late 1800s. It wasn't until the 1930s that the region began planning for use of surface water. Uh, first major project was the Lake Houston Dam, which was constructed in 1951 to 1954, that uh, formed the, uh, the reservoir of Lake Houston. The next regional reservoirs constructed was Lake Conroe and Lake Livingston in the late 1960s and early 70s. The Coastal Water Authority, or CEWA, a conservation and reclamation district created by the state in 1967, is managing the project. In its role as the city of Houston's untreated surface water provider, the city owns the water and CEWA builds, operates, and maintains the systems and gets the water where it needs to go. The project consists of a $50 million, uh, 500 million gallon per day pump station, three miles of dual 96 inch diameter pipelines and 23 and a half miles of earthen canal, which runs through farmlands and wooded areas in, in Liberty County. The City of Houston, the West, North and Central Harris County Regional Water Authorities and the North Fort Bend Water Authority are partners in Loose Bayou, with each paying their fair share for equipment and pipelines that will treat, transport and deliver the water from Lake Houston to points beyond. Once we had the water into Lake Houston, we then had to have a huge water purification plant, one of the largest purification plants around very, very costly by today's, in today's uh, marketplace, but it had to be done. And having all of the regional water authorities in partnership with the city of Houston, were able to share those costs and get the project done and save as much money as possible. So as a part of the process for designing and constructing this regional water plant, the city and the regional water authorities came up with a contract agreement and a set of guidelines outlining how we would get through this process. A large part of that has to do with a consensus voting process where every participant has a vote in the various aspects of the design and construction of the plant. And in order to do that, we are working daily together in a collaborative process at the same location so that decisions can be made in real time and the project can advance forward without delays. The Central Authority, we are a small authority of only 11 districts. It would be financially difficult, if not impossible, for us to uh, meet our groundwater reduction mandates without the partnership. These are truly legacy projects that will impact future generations um, beyond 2050. Not just is it that we're providing something as, as pure as water to people 50 to 60 miles away from the location where the water is being treated. Um, th th this is something that is going to span generations. So there will be people uh, that aren't born today that will be recognizing the benefit of what we're doing today. We need to work in concert to make sure that we're getting the best product um, that we possibly can. One of the unique things about the collaboration and consensus process is the leadership that each water authority brings to that team. We have design engineers, we have process engineers, we have construction folks, 
We have people with design and architecture backgrounds. There's a wide variety of expertise and uh, knowledge that makes up our leadership team between the city and the water authorities, which makes a lot of questions come to the surface very quickly so that we're looking globally at issues, not with a microscope. This is probably one of the most exciting projects that anybody in the water business or the water field has an opportunity to work on. Um, and to me, what's so exciting about it is, is that most everybody recognizes this. This is why people are coming from around the country to be on, in Houston, Texas, to be a part of a project um, that's not only the largest uh, uh, expansion project in the world, but it is truly an exciting project because of the technologies that we're bringing into this facility um, and, and, and because of the, the breadth and, and depth of, of, of how many people this project will inevitably impact. The water from Lake Houston will be treated at the Northeast Water Purification Plant, which will then be conveyed in major transmission lines. How do we get all the water we need to the west? Well, we, we build an eight-foot diameter water pipeline. So fortunately, in 2006, we were able to purchase an inactive gas pipeline easement from ExxonMobil Corporation. That runs from approximately Peak Road to the east side of town, approximately 40 miles. We're not going to be using all 40 miles of it, but it does give us a route for our pipeline. Fort Bend County is, is rich in Texas history, and we think we'll continue to play a very significant role in the growth of Texas, uh, particularly given our fantastic population growth that we've seen and, we'll, and expect to continue to see. Uh, our population of roughly a quarter of a million people is expected to double by 2040 and triple by 2080. We have built 54 miles of lines within the authority and then the second source line that we're sharing with the west is 39 miles and that is eight foot diameter pipe. The surface water supply project is a massive landmark project. There have certainly been large pipelines installed for long distances in the past, but this one is being constructed through the heart of a crowded city. The pipeline is a joint project between the West Harris County Regional Water Authority and the North Fort Bend Water Authority, carrying much needed treated surface water from Lake Houston across almost 40 miles of Houston Harris County to water users in the West. These massive construction costs that you've heard about, that we've talked about, the Loose Bayou Project, the water purification plant, the transmission lines, the distribution lines, the pump stations, the storage facilities, billions of dollars in the Houston area that we are spending. We have to learn to use water more wisely. Fairly early on, we said, geez, the cheapest water we can find is the water we can save. And the real challenge is to change people's habits. Um, we can spend billions of dollars on infrastructure projects, but if people are still going to use water like it's free, then we've defeated the purpose. Obviously, the cost to the user to build these major infrastructure projects uh, is concerning. We, we're all concerned that the price of water is going up. There's no doubt about it. However, the alternative is pretty bleak. This is an issue for everyone in the United States. And we have the confidence of knowing that we're going to have the water we need. When you add up the price tags of all the massive projects now underway, the total would be more than $1.5 billion over the next decade. How will we pay for it? The WHCRWA was not given taxing authority when it was created by the state legislature. Instead of taxes, fees are charged for groundwater pumped by the utility districts and their customers within the authority's boundaries. They are also charged for the delivery of surface water. There have been numerous bond sales to fund the 2010 distribution system and other construction and operating costs. In November 2013, Texans had the opportunity to vote for a constitutional amendment creating the State Water Implementation Fund for Texas to assist in financing priority projects in the state water plan. Voters did so overwhelmingly. This election signaled the state's new approach to turning water plans into water supplies. SWIFT enabled municipalities, counties, water authorities, and other water providers to apply for the low-interest loans. 
With assistance from the SWIFT program, Texas now has the means to help meet the state's water needs far into the future. The State Water Implementation Fund of Texas is a very unique financing program. First in that it ties planning into financing. So we're moving forward with very well vetted projects such as the Loose Bayou project. A long term project, a large project with regional implications that's going to provide future water supplies for years to come. We have money to loan right here at home and you won't get a better interest rate anywhere than the Texas Water Development Board. The important thing in this project is the partnership between all the water authorities and the City of Houston to make this project successful. Along with our partners, independently and collaboratively, we are actively engaged in stewarding our finite water resources that have defined Texas for generations. We'll honor the commitments made to customers, the municipal utility districts, by adopting sound water management strategies that include promoting conservation and incentivizing the use of reclaimed water. And we'll do everything we can to keep the cost of water as low as possible for as long as possible.